So in the first week of July, myself and a couple of others from my boxing team went to the SA Nationals. This video is not too heavily edited. A lot of footage has been lost in the mix. This video is just more for myself as a reflection of the journey that we had. There were some ups, there was a massive down at the end of the event. Uh, stay tuned for more details on that. I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, welcome to the channel, Nick here. So, today is the 4th of July, it's a Tuesday. We left yesterday. Uh, we took a 20 hour drive uh, all the way from Stellenbosch to Samin. Uh, we are here for the South African National Boxing Championships. Uh, I've got two fighters participating this week and well, we are on an adventure for these fights. So it took us about 20 hours to drive here, including all the stops and all the mishaps in between. Along the way, you know, you just see guys shadow boxing at every stop. And, you know, these boxes, you can't really take them anywhere. The one boxer, oh, we came across a dog, we fed them. But, you know, those are just some things that you come across as you go along. Oh man, just feeding a stray dog, making sure she's got some food in. So roughly three hours before recording this, we arrived to the venue. It's quite a beautiful place. I feel like I'm on holiday actually. Uh, the lizards or geckos are big, the butterflies are big. The ants are also larger than what I'm used to. But yeah, the purpose of this video is to document the whole trip. So we're going to document the, this whole trip to give clarity on uh, this whole process of the SA Nationals, as well as just documenting the adventure for, you know, fun. I thought it would be a different type of content, maybe a bit more fun and uh, more, give more insight to uh, what we do. So a bit later, we are going to just check in to let the, the organizers know that we are here and we are participating. So tomorrow will be weigh-ins at 7 o'clock. Uh, then, of course, all the admin sorting out the nitty-gritty. And, of course, the opening ceremony followed by the fight starting. So my fighters will probably only start fighting on Thursday. We will only have the program by tomorrow afternoon. I... I assume and in the meantime while we wait we will record everything uh, and meanwhile while we wait for our fights and whatnot we will record things of the event just to have good documentation of it so I hope you sit back and enjoy if you have any questions about anything please leave me a comment down below with your questions and uh, we'll hopefully get around to answering them see men are still down from all the driving this man just forgot to do his ID photo for his green book <laughs> just putting it out there this is like last minute fixes at least we're here a day early and here we have the ring being finished up or well, one of them there's still another ring there that needs to be done. And now we wait for these boys to get their photos taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go, taking photos. Nice. There we go, Wilbur taking his photos. Yeah, so the action starts tomorrow, uh, Wednesday the 5th of July. I'm the only one trying to lose weight here and these guys need to make sure that they're in the weight bracket. Now, we've got a heavyweight and a super heavyweight here and they literally like just came out the supermarket. They bought so much food like snacks and um, dessert and stuff. Now they're in the KFC and now they're going to buy a meal here to eat now. Three. Three, three. 
Sí, de vuelta. Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 5th of July, and we are busy with weigh-ins now. Guys checked in weight earlier. They were a bit underweight, so they've been drinking water and eating bean fat. KFC wasn't enough. He still didn't make weight. So now he's eating this milk tart for breakfast. It's 500 grams under. He needs to get 500 grams in. Fat fuck. So, yeah, we're going to be lining up now and do weigh-ins and medicals. So, yeah, they're just making sure who's here. There's my guys. Wilbur and Cameron. Yeah. And they're just explaining a few things here, how it's going to work. So, nothing too, too much to say here. My guys just went inside. They're gonna go for their weigh-ins now. They are inside there with their meeting and the weigh-ins not allowed in. So there was a little bit of a mishap. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it, but um, the boxes are in now with, uh, with uh, management. Um, so the whole Western province team is in there coaches are not allowed in uh, I can only give updates uh, once I see my boxes afterwards okay guys so just a quick update weigh-ins are done and everything everything is sorted Cameron's division he's got a total of two other opponents so he'll probably be fighting only on Friday in the semi-finals uh, that's an estimate unless other people pitch up to weigh in and then Wilbur there's a total of five guys in this division. So he'll probably fight earliest on Thursday. So we'll get programs for the day later. Um, we're going to do the opening ceremony and then we'll take it from there. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to have a little interview with uh, one of the Western Province coaches. He's a, he's a very great man and I hope he can give you some insights about what we do here on this side of the world. Hi, my name is Theo Mudise. Uh, I'm from Worcester. Uh, I was a boxer, an amateur boxer. I was in the national team for 10 years. I won the Commonwealth Games 1996 in Mabato. And then I went pro. When I was a pro boxer, uh, I became a uh, SA champion, Junior Pantam. Defended my title three times. And then now I'm a coach. And uh, I'm a star, star one qualified coach, which means I'm level one internationally. I'm, I was with the team since uh, 2013 with the Western Cape team. At least I've got a little bit of experience training boxers. Yes, and then uh, yeah, we are in the national championship in Sanin. Uh, we're fighting, we will be fighting for four days from today till Sunday, and then there will be nine, it's nine provinces plus one team from South African boxers that are fighting under the, the South African team. They will be fighting also there. They are testing their skills because they are going to Cameroon on the 25th till the 8th of July. They are going to fight for the Zone 5 championship there. Uh, today we are ready to rumble. There we go. The man is a bit... Uh too humble uh, so when I say that he won uh, coach of the year uh, last year uh, as well uh, man's uh, got so much knowledge it's unbelievable and I, I really think this interview doesn't really do him justice because he he's humble he, he cuts himself a bit short but yeah I hope you guys uh, know get to see who I get to work with and it's pretty fantastic Okay, still setting up for the opening ceremony today. Everything is looking beautiful.
Oh yeah. E easy champ. Yes, boy. Let's go, champ. Two more. Yes, boy. One more. Beautiful. All right, everybody. Say it again. Day two of the fights. There we go. <laughs> so it's day two of the fights. Um, it is our third day here. I realized that I didn't actually film a good outro for the end of yesterday. We were a bit too tired and we had a lot to get done. I hope you guys enjoyed um, all the behind the scenes stuff for the, for the ceremony. And you could just see the the beautiful culture we have in our country. It's actually very great. Um, we we saw some beautiful fights and some sloppy fights yesterday, but all in all, things are looking good. Um, so it's day two of the fights. Cameron Chaos Tyler is fighting today. Uh, I did on the day of filming this. I did post a a link on, on my YouTube channel. So that those who are interested to watch could, can. It's, uh, well, well, by the time this is posted, it was a live stream. So um, I'll put a link down to Cameron's channel down below so you can f uh, follow his boxing journey. Guy is a exciting fighter to watch. Really is. Uh, I think you'll, you'll enjoy his content if you enjoy watching amateur boxing. Uh, and you know with his goals uh, I think it might be a, a very uh, beautiful journey to to follow but yeah we Cameron weighed in this morning he made weight well it's the first time I have to actually see guys eat so much to make weight instead of it's completely the opposite than what we're used to um, so we are gonna head there a bit later um, it's only fighting later today, so around about 5, 6 p.m. So we're going to head there after 2, just get the vibe in. Uh, the man is needs to get into the zone. And, I mean, I feel sorry for his opponent today. He's, he's going to not expect what's coming for him. And, yeah, enjoy. I'm going to capture as much as I can. And I'll also put that fight into this vlog all right all right so we're here at the venue now and we're gonna watch some fights first before champ over there knocks someone out my predictions 30 seconds we'll see later in the video if i'm wrong yeah we're gonna watch some fights now
Jam. Can't take these guys anywhere. Even after the fights, we're still boxing. Golly. Good day, everyone. So it is day four of being in Limpopo, day three of the Nationals tournament. Uh, next to me here is one of my boxers, Cameron. Uh, Chaos Tyler. Uh, I suggest you follow his boxing journey. I'll send you a, 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 a link down below so that you can subscribe to his channel and follow him. Uh, last night he performed very well uh, in his mm -hmm. in his bout. He won by a KO. Uh, I did post up a short. I'll also put that down below if you want to check it out. Or well, actually, I'm gonna be posting the f fight on here. Uh, let me just redo it. Okay, just take pick up from where you left off, and you just cut, yeah, cut yeah, that part. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I actually posted the fight just before this um, sorry <laughs> uh, yeah as you saw uh, from yesterday's uh, events uh, the way that he fought it was beautiful it was according to the game uh, if you understand what style of boxing we're trying to work on or what strategies we're implement implementing let us know in the comment section down below let's see if you can make a good guess uh, but it was phenomenal. It was a great KO punch. I mean, if you saw that one right hand clip him in the corner, his opponent in the corner, and how he was just holding on for dear life, you knew like it was going down. Yeah. But anyway, um, we just want to uh, speak with Cameron now uh, and just hear his thoughts and reflections on the fight and his mindset going into everything. So, mm -hmm. Cameron, if you don't mind, yeah, take sure. Over. Thanks, Coach. Sure. So, I mean, it's I'm only a couple of fights in, so obviously the nerves can be unsettling on the day of the fight. I don't have a lot of ring experience, and I think that's where it's so important to have the right team around you, especially when you, you know, walking into the venue, when you're busy warming up, when you're busy wrapping your hands, um, and and just having that team and that comfort around me really helped to, you know, reduce the cortisol, give me some calmness, and let me find my feet. And I think, you know, when, when we got into the ring and, and that bell went, you know, everything that, you know, Coach Nick had taught me in camp, all the little um, changes we made to suit my stance and to suit my fight style, it all just kicks in in that moment. It's like when that bell goes, your body just, it's become second nature. You drilled it so hard in practice, um, you know, to slip a punch and counter that when you're in the fight and the punch comes, it becomes second nature to just slip it and counter punch. So, you know, we did a hard camp, you know, preparing for yesterday's fight. And um, all I can say is we drilled it out. And on the day we implemented Coach Nick's strategy almost to perfection. There are one or two things we can tighten up before we go into the finals. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm feeling good. I didn't take a lot of damage. And we ended the fight the way we wanted to with the knockout in one minute and um, blessed feeling happy and on to the next one yeah so to add to that like when it came to those counter punches you can see they're like leading up towards the end of the fight uh, he didn't waste a split of a second mm. you know the, 
he, he created the opportunity and he took it. And, you know, the other coach next to me, great guy, phenomenal coach, just said, yeah, he should sort it out with, with the jab a bit more. But we knew we were going in with a slugger that was going to try and put him away. Mm. And, I mean, just getting off the counter punch already, it threw the other guy off. Yeah. He was not expecting a guy like Cameron to be so explosive and so dangerous, right? And it, it really, really paid off. And this is with how amateur boxing works in South Africa, you know, you, you, you need to treat it similar to, to a pro fight, mm -hmm. right? Even though that it's three rounds, I mean, you've got a short amount of work and you need to be aggressive and putting the pressure on. And I mean, just by being the more entertaining fighter with, with how the judging is here, it's, it's gonna be way more beneficial. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we saw a fight on, on the first day where um, the one guy was phenomenal, right? But his style of boxing does not suit amateurs. It's, he will make a great pro fighter yep. because he can roll off punches and counter punch beautifully. Yep. But the, the problem is that there wasn't enough aggression from his side. He wasn't controlling the pace, nor was he taking every opportunity it given to him. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't an no. exciting fight to no, watch. No, it wasn't. And now that he was blocking and rolling off most of his punches, it looked like he was losing. Yeah. He baited the other opponent to come in to mm. the corner, yeah. and you know he was just rolling with the punches and then just timing perfect counter blows the whole time. It, it's not enough. Mm. You have to take every opportunity that's given to you. And I mean, with the short amount of time you have, you, you can't rely on a style like that. Maybe that's, this is why I say he will be good at pros because I mean, he can follow that sort of strategy for the first three rounds. You could lose the first three rounds, but then st from round four up, he can start taking it home. 100%. You, you know what I mean? So like, that is something that you have to consider. There's a big difference between amateur boxing and pro boxing. And I mean, you, you don't have the benefit of finding your range. You really don't, unless you have a certain style to the T where you can rely on nice long jabs. Mm. But uh, with the way that Cameron's built in his weight division, I mean, he's a stocky pit bull type of character. So, you know, mm. you have to be very snappy with those counter punches and be powerful from the word go. That's uh, the thing, if I can add, especially with amateur boxing, because we only go three rounds, there isn't that mm, case of mm. taking a round or two to figure out your opponent and see you know your distance in between your jab and set up that timing you don't have that time so you have to implement your strategy and you've got to make sure you implement it first so a big thing that coach teaches me and uh, talks to me about is hit first and hit hard so sometimes you just have to go in there and do a dog fight because uh, at the end of the day it's the exciting fighter that wins it's the guy that gets the knockout that gets more tension on the fight so you actually have to you know, WWE it in, in a sense of you have to entertain the crowd, put on a show for the judges, and you, you can't be a boring fighter. And I mean, what I also found last night in my fight is it's very difficult to box someone that's there to bar fight with you, someone that's there to brawl with you, which is why our style of boxing works well, because we are counter punches. We slip punches, we move, and we counter. Um, I wouldn't have a been able to take any time to try and figure out my jab and my range with my opponent because from the get-go when that bell rang, he just came in slugging. So my style worked perfectly in that the first punch that he threw, what did I do? I just rolled it and I got out the way completely. So our style of boxing is working in the amateurs, it's exciting. I'm going to argue with that now because I will do a breakdown of that fight. Mm. But I'm going to pinpoint the, the technical aspects so that you can actually see that it's not just slugging from Cameron's side. Mm. It was just making sure that everything was instinctual and just taking control of the, of the fight and just literally not wasting a split of a second. I mean, he was slipping and weaving and he was counter-punching. Mm. Now, some people will say, like, no, he's just slugging because he did make the mistake of throwing wide hooks which is something that we're going to need to work on because he needs to throw nice, tight, short, snappy punches. Mm. But uh, I give credit to this guy because you're, you're deaf in your left ear. Yeah, yeah. right? 100% deaf in the left ear. You, you'll see, there's an instance where he threw two wide hooks and he was, uh, he didn't land, but the punches came around the back of his opponent's head, 
right? So in that moment, I just shouted loud, tighten up those hooks, tighten up your punches. And then mm. you could see from that point, the punches were tighter. And that like with this sort of thing, with uh, your opponent trying to smother you, throwing those tighter punches are gonna be more beneficial. He's already powerful, right? He can already throw a powerful punch. I've seen this man in sparring throw a short tight hook to the body and it's brutal. Like even if the guy is protecting himself, they still feel it, you know? So, so at, at, at the end of the day, I mean, because he doesn't have much experience under his belt, the game is showing signs that it's working. It's just having yes. faith in the process now. Yeah, and yeah. I think that, that was a, a key changer in that round for me because I'd, I'd thrown some very wide hooks and missed completely. And just by hearing coach scream, tighten up that hook, I knew that I had to get a tighter guard and do focus on shorter hooks. And 10, 20 seconds later, I threw that tight hook and dropped the guy. So that was a pivotal turning point in the fight for me. Oh, it was great. It was absolutely phenomenal. Like I've been bragging to everyone, friends, family about him in that fight because I'm absolutely proud of how it played out. It just shows that the work that we're putting in. Mm. And uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, John, and he gave me the the crazy idea of working what we're working and I'm, I'm doing it a lot more um, he just said like no yeah he's good it was an excellent fight because uh, I mean he as he said he had a crazy dream and says like no you should do this and I'm following through with it completely you know because uh, I learned the traditional way but obviously with my style of boxing it made sense yeah. teach what you know right and it, it's it's working quite well but what I'm really absolutely blown away by is like all the support that we've been getting up to this sure. point. I mean, uh, we couldn't have made it here without a couple of sponsors, right? Uh, I'm not gonna give names. I know who they are and we thank them dearly. Uh, I just don't like uh, putting people in the spotlight when you know they show their generosity. Yeah. And I mean, the support that Cameron's been getting after the fights, like his DMs, like there's a legendary uh, boxer and promoter that messaged him uh, last night. And I mean, you really have to impress this guy, you know, for him to message you like that. And I mean, it, I think for the finals now tomorrow, it's just going to get better from there. But I mean, this man's Instagram is blowing up. You should check that out too. It's also Cameron Chaos Tyler. Uh, We'll, we'll put a, 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 a link down below with, with his handle. He's more active on Instagram, so if you really want to keep uh, up to date with his journey, that, that's the one that you should follow. Yeah. And I mean, you can see he's sponsored already. Uh, like, man, it's just, this guy's got the it factor. I, c I can guarantee that. And that's for me to, for me to invest in people, like it, like, Bulb is over there, and I'm invested in his fight tonight, and he, he can tell you if I invest in you, it means something, right? Because I, I, where I teach, it's just students, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, when it was, I'm ba we're based in a student town, and people come and go, right? So I just teach them enough so that they, they can go and p put their journey further. And with guys that stick with me like this, like uh, I have to invest time, and if I'm obligated to invest time in them, right? And if I'm willing to invest time in you, that, that means yeah. something. I mean, really. And the supporters that he has investing in him, oh man, it's just phenomenal. He's, it, it's f amazing. If I, I can just it. say one thing, the, the we would not have gotten up here to Limpopo if it wasn't for the mm -hmm. amazing generosity and kindness shown by our supporters, our team, our friends and our family, our loved ones. Um, boxing in the amateurs in South Africa, it's no joke. It's, they send us all over. They send us into townships. They send us across the country. There's no funding from any organization. So we, we need to rely on, on this, the, the generosity and the kindness of others. And so at the end of the day, you're doing this more than just for your dream. You know, you, you're trying to prove something for yourself and you've got a certain amount of pressure on you as well, but the pressure pays off, you know. If you stick to the game plan, the pressure pays off. And there were some donations that were made to the campaign to help get us here, and the people didn't even put their name in. They didn't want recognition. It was an anonymous donation. So 
if you are one of those people watching right now, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And just to show that you didn't put your, your name in there because you needed validation, it just shows that you are actually helping us out of the kindness of your heart and you, you don't want any, anyone saying, wow, look at that donation from that person. It's, it blows me away. So thank you for following, following the journey, guys. And I'm, I'm going to say this now because we have to talk about the opposite end of the spectrum as well. Mm -hmm. We need to be real with everyone here. He's also gotten a lot of hate. But I mean, looking at where it comes from, it's from, uh, well, let's call them rivals, and it's just pure jealousy, right? And uh, we actually laugh about it because, I mean, uh, you, you can, uh, we'll be doing an interview with a little bit tomorrow as well. I love, like, making uh, quibs at every. <laughs> And you have I to mean, be ready for coaches shots because they come quick and fast <laughs> and you have to have a comeback otherwise you're gonna sit down you might knock me out but i'm yeah. always gonna win on points, on points. <laughs> um so yeah it's just how, how can i say this the, those hate comments actually never discouraged us it actually gave a bit more drive as well it added it, fuel to my fire yeah no it, it did, added definitely. fuel i mean not even just a comment but you know i've been messaged i've been I, people have sent me voice notes and with hate I'm, I'm i'm gonna i'm gonna say this now it, it, it people get the the wrong idea that like yeah no i have to prove them wrong you know it wasn't that it, it, it just had this like motivating quality to it because we know that there's just jealousy involved and knowing that you are a a threat mm. you know and i mean that's what we, 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 we've been working on. Like, if you've ever, you can vouch for this right now. When I always say, like, we're there to put people in survival mode, right? Mm -hmm. Because that way, when you're in survival mode, you don't think clearly. You're just thinking of making it out alive, right? And that's literally what's going on. When you put so much pressure onto someone they cannot implement their game plan because all they're focusing on is not getting knocked out or not getting hurt. So if you add that pressure onto them, it's the, the best game plan that you can, can have. We don't want to sit there and wait to see what does my opponent do. Mm. We want to put the pressure on him so that he forgets what he's doing and um, we just carry on executing. Yeah, no, 100%. But, I mean, the experience alone, um, like this is actually my first time coaching at nationals uh, it, like I said before I work with students and they come and go uh, Wilbur is very happy to have me in this corner this time around so uh, you know it, it's just that this 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 week has just been you know absolutely beautiful and I, I say that because like I've been giving the speech a lot about being a weekend warrior is never enough if you if, like if you your love and passion for the sport is not enough and once you realize that it's just you know it it puts you on this perpetual path of of growth and that's what we're looking for continual improvement yeah that's what coach always tells me kaizen that's that that one percent better every single day until you get to the top and i mean uh just seeing how his confidence boosted just from last night game plan working and stuff and like I cannot tell you how many times I've had some words of doubt come out of this man's mouth like he said sorry for slugging and then when we you know he was turning the fight into a brawl and then when I sh when we went through the fight and I told him like you executed the game plan perfectly and when he looked and we, we looked at everything in slow motion we did everything that we did in the warm up hundred percent you yeah. know and one thing I say is that competence builds confidence once the proof is in the pudding you reflect back on that and then you know that uh, you are capable right and there's a fine line of knowing your shit and buying into your shit there's yeah. too much people that buy into their shit and not knowing their shit um, and you know the, there's these guys that hype up themselves like they've never lost a, f a, a fight but then you go look like wait hold up they're on a three you fight know? loss streak yeah yeah 
or you know four five or whatever their career is basically over and then you have the guys that you know lose a fight but then they bounce back really hard because they learned that valuable lesson and i mean being involved with amateur boxing and stuff i always tell the guys like hey it's amateur boxing it's okay to lose here you know we're on a path yeah. of growth mm -hmm. and I, I, i've seen it with some guys where they lose and they just bounce back harder and they start becoming unstoppable yeah. right and you know that's what you're looking for that constant growth I cannot stress that enough and last night was literally just I've been hyped about it this whole morning like I've been hyped about it last night I had to take uh, some 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 things to calming uh, remedies calming remedies natural calming natural remedies. over the counter it, yeah uh, what's it herbal calms they, they herbal, sell it yeah. I, I, I can't mention uh, the pharmacy I might be well at clicks uh, <laughs> I haven't comps. seen coach this hype in yeah. quite a long time and let me tell you I've been under coach Nick's guidance now for roughly 10 months and in the last couple of months his eyes haven't sh shone as brightly as what they have been in the last couple of weeks because r we, r we remember at the end of the day we are boxers this is what we do we live and we breathe boxing and fighting it's actually a lifestyle coach Nick is a boxing coach so what he wants is the best for his athletes so when coach Nick's athletes are succeeding he succeeds his job he's a full-time boxing coach he wants us to win and he wants us to have the best game plans he wants us to have the best execution because it shows I mean coach is on a eight nine fight win streak now and it's because he put together a game plan which he gives to us and if we follow it and if we listen to it we win and that shows on coach's record. And I've never seen a coach more excited and more invested than what I've seen coaching. I mean, we're sitting here in a little guest room in a Limpopo. There's three grown ass men and we all on little single beds. Wilbur's uh, shoulders barely even fit on the bed because he's so wide. And you know, we're in pain from all this training and fighting and coaches sitting there, you know, massaging, rubbing out the the inflammation and assisting us um, so hats off to coach Nick you know he's a he's an exceptional exceptional thank coach you. thank you uh, these guys do all the hard work I'm just looking after them that's it you know just like an angry grandpa like no not like this like this <laughs> you know so bring the whip yeah <laughs> well guys uh, today is the second last day so mm. uh, we'll continue recordings there at the venue showing you some of the highlight fights and then of course uh, we'll, we'll share Wilbur's fight after that and then uh, if Wilbur doesn't mind doing one of these talks Definitely. tomorrow for the vlog then we'll continue for the with that. For the Afrikaans men sir, yeah. <laughs> stay tuned. Meet, yeah. meet. I say. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Alright, but thanks for uh, watching this far, this far into the vlog so far, really appreciate it. And then yeah, we, we'll continue as we are. All right. Cheers, guys. And don't forget to comment down below if you've guessed what is the fight style that we're talking about. See if you can guess. Uh, if you can't, if you can't uh, take a good guess, I'll, I'll, I'll share some amateur bouts uh, sometime after this vlog. All right. Cheers, guys. <laughs>
composure, boy! Composure, champ! Composure! Wilbur's getting tired, boy! Where's my phone? Composure, you're fast, boy! Get safe, Ola! Good job, boy! Move around the ring! Composure, Willa! Yes, boy! Yes! What the fuck is that, man? That's what it is, Willa, the angles, man! Use the angles, boy! Keep him off! Move around him, Woba! Move around him, champ! Woba, move around, boy! Use your range, boy! Cut the angles! Fuck is this man? Let go! <laughs> box man, box! Woman, this is what you do, boy! This is what you do, boy! This guy, use your range! Range, Woba, range! Let's go, Wilma! He wants to slap! He wants to slap! Yes! Keep him off! No, Willas! Move, well! Let go, man! Yeah, he's trying to lie on the ropes yeah. and let him just... <laughs> fuck, the lack of right hand. What the fuck, man? Come on, Wilba! Let's go! Let's go, 
So the, so, the date of recording this, it's the 10th of August. Well, this fight happened on the, I believe it was the 7th of July. I know, a bit long um, reaction afterwards, but I thought rather wait out and give a better reflection on this rather than the following day. Um, I could see that Wilbur wasn't really in it. He had a bit of a a tough day the next day. And um, I'll speak to him in another video reflecting on this experience. But if you are watching the fight, there are some important things that need to be discussed. So on the day, we had to go wait. Wilbur had to go way in again. But... His green book was missing. So with his book missing, um, there was this impression that he wasn't going to fight on the day. This is Friday morning. But his opponent was there to weigh in. So where's Wilbur's book? Why is it missing? So he asked around. They found his book. He weighed in. They said they're going to add his fight manually. So it wasn't on the official uh, list of fights for the day. So it was easy to miss. So much so that the announcer pretty much <laughs> almost didn't announce the fight. The announcer didn't know that the fight was happening. Uh, most of the other, well, our team manager actually didn't know what was happening. And walking to the ring, heard last moment, I wasn't allowed to step forth from the ring. And it's a legitimate rule because I'm not a provincial coach. I'm only a club coach. So only provincial coaches may step onto the ring. I could only sit and give commands from where I was sitting. I'm not allowed to stand and say a word and, and so forth. So everything up to this point was a bit fishy. Other club coaches got to step up onto the ring. Not, not just myself with Cameron and now they bring that into play the fact that Wilbur's book was missing it, it, it just seemed like they didn't want him to fight to be honest reflecting back onto it I, I know I'm getting into conspiracy theory uh, territory here but um, I've always been warned by others about Sanabo you know about them being rotten and you know, 
to be fair, boxing is one of the most corrupted sports in existence, as much as I hate to say that. But that's the reality of it. So, that was already throwing us off during the day. It just seemed a bit weird, right? It only hit us on the Friday, like, wait, hold up. This seems a bit weird. Um, but if you were watching the fight, there was so much clinching happening from blue side. Now, I'm only going to be talking about the performance of what's happening in the fight. Opposition. Very well mannered, greets, shakes hands, always a smile, you know, uh, very well mannered. So I'm not going to say anything nasty about him. But if you were watching the fight, there was a lot of clinching, a lot of, it wasn't even boxing. It was clinching and dirty boxing. And I mean, this threw Wilbur off. As you know, he always faced people that were just willing to box, not fight like that but I mean you do what you can until the ref tells you to stop right but this ref seemed completely uninterested in this fight so much so that he wasn't refing like he's supposed to be you know um, clinching and holding happening for way too way too long um, punches while holding happening the fact that front headlocks were happening in that fight, um, the amount in the first round alone was just um, staggering. Um, the The fact that blue was the blue corner with the opposition was trying to push Wilbur over the top ropes, you know, and these things weren't called. So. There was no repercussions, you know. Um, there was no consequences for not following the rules of boxing. I've always told my guys, you, you need to prepare for something like this because uh, the ref is not going to be on your side, right? You're going to get a biased ref or you're going to get a ref that's un uninterested. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, what's the first rule? Protect yourself at all times. Be prepared for anything. And this threw Wilbur off completely. Uh, it was his first time encountering something like this, as experienced as he is. So, there's nothing that we should be complaining about. And it's, it's something that you need to take in consideration. You need to learn how to clinch and you need to learn some dirty boxing. And you need to fight dirty to your own discretion until the ref tells you otherwise. If that ref likes you and doesn't like the other guy you're going to get away with more things but you know um i i say this loosely but you know you could hear in the crowd reactions that they were not enjoying this like <laughs> people in the audience just told us that wilbur got robbed wilbur got robbed and i need to actually watch the fight again and actually just start counting the punches and see if they're actually scoring it according to amateur rule set. Now, when it comes to amateur boxing, we always think of the Olympic style boxing, but that's not necessarily the case uh, in some countries. You can still, you can follow a, a different set of rules to an extent. And I know with majority of the time we do amateur fights here, it's a 10 must system instead of the Olympic style. Um, which it should actually be. So I would have to watch the fight and, and see accordingly if it is actually scored to that proper amateur way or not. Because then the, the knockdown shouldn't count. But yet again, um, <laughs> boxing is the most corrupt sport. And are the judges, like, my perception of this whole event was that the judges were not marking it the Olympic style way that was a 10 must so I'm gonna have to watch it again and just make sure to make a bit of better opinion of this but anyway the refing was absolutely poor because never in my life have I seen a ref deduct a point from both corners deducting a point for blue and then for red at the same time that doesn't make sense. Who is not obeying the rules? You deduct the point off that person, you know. 
unless both parties you have warned them before and you know in that moment they're both not listening but like <laughs> at that point why are you deducting a point of both parties then it doesn't really matter you know so that, that just doesn't make sense but yeah looking at that fight i do think you know, I'm going into conspiracy th uh, theory territory here and say is, it, they were doing their utmost to not let Wilbur succeed. Um, and that's pretty damn shameful on their side. But like I said, um, I believe Sanabo is rotten. I've had others tell me Sanabo is rotten, but then at the same time, saying that the emphasis is on us to improve and for us to be prepared for scenarios like that because I mean when you're doing this type when you're doing combat sports you know you don't leave it in the hands of the judges you shouldn't you need to, you need to take the driver's seat and you need to determine where this fight's gonna go you need to make it certain without a doubt that you are the victor so, it was a shame what happened, and it, I, I see that it did break Wilbur a little bit. But, at the end of the day, it's one of those learning curves that you have to go through at some point. Now, continuing with this vlog, um, I'm just going to sk skip to the next day of Cameron's fight. Um, I didn't record anything that morning like I said um, Wilbur wasn't in the headspace so we couldn't do a good reflection on it and Cameron was resting up for his fight so we just took it easy there was nothing exciting to film but we'll move to the final day of the tournament and you can check out Cameron's fight and my reflection on that Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 105, 91 kilograms on its way.
disappointing uh, which was an understatement because a lot has happened after the fight um, you'll notice I had to walk Cameron away and we had to take him into the ambulance 
I'll talk more about that in a bit. Threw in the towel. Um, one of the other coaches had the towel and I was shouting, throw in the towel. And it was just a bit of a delayed response. Um, if you notice, Cameron got hit in the back of the head, be it deliberate or accidental. You know, the golden rule is protect yourself at all times. After that back to back of the head shot, Cameron wasn't being very responsive to what I was saying. You know, when I noticed this, it was time to throw in the towel. Um, he, everything just went out. Everything just disappeared. He wasn't here. He was just fighting on instinct at that point. And well, that's when he was going to get seriously hurt. And he ended up getting a bit of a very serious concussion. So, <sighs> regarding the situation, Cameron's only had a handful of fights. So, he's definitely one of the less experienced people that went to SA Nationals. And, you know, it was a hard lesson that he learned. And majority of Cameron's fights didn't get into the second round. He finished his fights very quickly. So with the shot in the happening at the back of the head, he was never put in the situation where, you know, a guy's being as relentless as him. So, you know, people always criticize like, yeah, protect yourself at all times and uh, it's your fault and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, we already know this. All my life being involved in boxing, I've never had a situation like this happen. We had to throw in the towel and we had to rush off somebody to the am uh, to the hospital in the ambulance. It's first time for everything. Good part of this is that Cameron is still urging to get back into the ring. He's going to come back stronger, but maybe I should actually have another talk with him about this fight. It's not really my place um, to speak too much about this. It's more his. But it's one of those hard lessons you learn. And you learn it either while you are in training or you learn it the hard way very suddenly. And like I said, he has never been put in this position before because his fights end early. And sure, when it comes to the sparring, he's getting everybody else on the back foot. He never stepped into a corner. You know, he was never put in a position where, you know, he would have to guard the back of his head so that somebody doesn't hit it. You, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where, you know, somebody is dom dominant, but then also the inexperienced shows. Do I have, uh, do, do I have to take accountability for what happened to him? Yeah, absolutely, you know. I've been training him. I put him in that ring. I encouraged him to do this, you know. So, yeah, I do take some accountability for it. I am partly responsible. And, you know, we got him into the ambulance. Uh, I, we had to help him walk to the ambulance. It was a bit of a struggle. And then take him to the hospital. Um, things got pretty dire. I'm not going to talk too much about it. And he had to stay in the hospital overnight. So things went south pretty quickly and we had to sort out uh, an emergency. And, you know, our plans changed where we thought we can have a, like a decent drive through back. We were going to meet up with someone um, very well known in the boxing community uh, worldwide. Uh, I'm not going to state names here because it didn't happen. And then, you know, drive through and we would make it back Monday morning. Now, because of everything that happened, we had to make other arrangements to get Cameron back home safely. So Wilbur and Cameron flew back. I had to drive back. I had Cole with me. And, you know, I'm the only one with a driver's license. So, you know, kick it in emergency mode and... And, you know, 
I'm just glad that whole scenario is over with and Cameron's in good health. But what can we learn from this? You know, boxing's extremely unpredictable. And you know, this was Ca the final fight for Cameron. If he won this, he would have won gold. And I think the pressure got to him a little. So, and when the pressure gets to you, you make mistakes or, you know, you can lose it very easily, very quickly. But, yeah, this is, this is something, why pressure testing your game is very important. This is why it is important to get some hard sparring in once in a while. Not often, because, you know, got to look after the, the brain, you know. And unfortunately, it is what it is. Boxing is an unpredictable sport, and these things can happen. And that's why you must protect yourself at all times. I wouldn't want any boxer to experience this sort of thing, and I know there has been boxers that experienced worse, but it's part of the game, and we carry, and this is what we love doing, and we just carry on doing it, as stupid as that sounds. All in all, after all this, everybody's a bit more positive out of it because of the experiences we've learned from this. You know, we've come out a little bit stronger, and we, we walk away with a bit more information. And the funny thing is, you know, it was a very drastic situation where Cameron was like completely like gone is and literally just suddenly came back. Cool. He was fully encompassed mentors. And so then I went to outside the hospital quickly so I could get on the phone to speak to next of kin and just explain the situations and whatnot. And then as I came back in, those guys were already back at the drawing board, talking about the fight, figuring things out, and Cameron remembers most of this. So it just goes to show you, like, resilience is, is a must for this sort of thing. And if you don't have that sort of resilience, I mean, this isn't for you. Something like this would break most people. So yeah, I hope uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this mess of a video. Um, I think I'll, I'll I'll definitely do a part two interviewing Wilbur and Cameron. And I, I am sorry that this video is very raw in nature. I didn't do too much editing, unfortunately. I want to get to other projects, and I just wanted to get all this content off my phone, make sure it's backed up, edited in the video. Because once again, it's for, it's more for my own self-reflection. But yeah. Guys, please take care and have a good rest of your day.